Um, we're going to have to figure out what we're doing with the files so we don't have a repeat of what we did last time <laughs> because we used the same method for creating uh, the. If, if we do that, we'll, we'll do that in just a second. Um, but Laurel already started talking about audio quality. I'm kind of an audio quality nut. Um, I think they're laughing because they know it's true. Um, so one of the things you can do is get a USB-based audio device. See this? doesn't have the same plug. Those are audio jacks. There's something half millimeter, whatever, three millimeter audio jacks. This is a USB device. And it doesn't use um, the same way of getting in and out of the computer as those do. And the bottom line is it does a lot better controlling for ambient noise. And it does a lot better recording your voice the way it actually sounds. So when you're listening back to it, you'll see a difference. But the real reason for wanting these is to record sound that's much crisper. Um, it's not going to get rid of, say, totally uh, like a fan noise or a strong air conditioner or anything, but it's really nice. So, OK, you can get a, a one that will definitely do the job anywhere from, say, 22 to 40. Uh, the, you, can, you can definitely, in the mid to high 20s, you can get a pretty nice set. Um, Lisa has a set that's more square somewhere. Hers are more square. Uh, mine are more round. Her, this is a Plantronics one, but, which is a USB. There's a whole bunch from Logitech that are USB. Um, they're all going to be adequate. Um, probably the decider is what's more comfortable on your head. Because if you, make, if you do any length of time, it's going to start making a difference if it's comfy or not. OK, so what we need to do now is to prepare to do what I wanted to do in Echo 360 PCAP. I would like you to open PowerPoint again and make copy onto your desktop one of the files in public itchy. And it says something for PCAP. I can't even remember. It's, there's actually two choices. Oh, you don't on your computer? OK. Yeah. So I actually gave you two choices. I can't remember what they are. Let me peek. OK, Ma capture tips for PCAP is the same presentation you Laurel was walking you through. And then the math pres for PCAP just has a little different slides. And it's a little better for writing on and doing annotations with. So choose one of those if you have it available. And copy it to your desktop. And when you're set, just give me some indication that you're good to go with that. OK, so you're set. You're set. OK. You're not even in the running, because you don't even have access. Well, I'm using it every day. That's right. You're, so, you're, you're, you're an old hand at this. OK, so yeah. no, stay around and be technical support. Um, OK. OK, and then that's saying it's open by someone else. OK. OK, so everybody's good? Looks like everybody went with a new thing. Um, so I'm not going to actually attempt to walk through it up here, um, except to show you this. I'm going to minimize. Now, this is actually important. Once you have started the recording process in PCAP, which we're about to do, you can't open a new application. For example, you can't start a PCAP recording and open PowerPoint. You have to have it minimized. You actually have to open the application, get ready, and minimize it, which you know to do by going up to this corner and clicking the little minus looking button so that it's down at the bottom. So everybody, the next step is minimize down to the bottom by clicking that little minimizer arrow. And the next thing to do is, I don't have personal capture on here. That's what I thought. So personal capture looks like. I'm not sure you have it either. Personal capture looks like that little circle symbol that um, it should be on the lower right uh, near the hawk's head somewhere. If you double click on that, you will launch the application. So double click that to launch it. Yep, that's right. You'll see a new little window pop up. Might I?
Oh, already launched? Smart. I could check at the bottom. It's OK. Um, so let's see. Let's see if we can find, let's see, Jim. OK, let me see if we had it somewhere out of the way. Hmm. It is not obvious, is it? You know what? Here, for this one, let's scoot you over, because this does have it here. And it doesn't, it doesn't actually matter. You don't actually have to do the PowerPoint part of it. OK. Hmm? Yeah, I think it's a little bit of Yeah, it won't launch without my headphones, but it would launch with them. OK, cool. OK, you're right. I don't know if he prepared the other way, but I'll be glad to be the your clicker for you. OK, thank you. OK, so have you, you've got it now? Let's see. So double click on that, and it'll launch. OK, so now, the thing about Echo 360, and this is really, um, having troubles with this copy, apparently. Um, the thing about Echo 360 is it captures your entire computer screen when you have it on, when you're, when you're asking it to capture your whole computer screen. Another thing, before we actually start using it, we're going to be trying to use it to do a narrated PowerPoint-ish sort of thing or screen capture sort of thing, which is more or less what we're doing with PowerPoint. But Echo 360 can do two other things that are really different than that. It can also just let you do audio by itself. So if you wanted to just do something like a podcast or do an audio message and put that into your course, no problem. You can do that. The other thing it'll let you do is it'll let you use a webcam, either built into your computer like these or one that you sit on top of your computer. And you can do a personal message like, hi, I'm Professor Smith. Welcome to Social 101. We're going to have a great time this year. I did that in a course I taught, and it worked out really well for me. It helped establish a sense of uh, instructor presence, and it was really good. Yes. So what we're going to do is you can go to this front. Are, are we up and running? Oh, great. We can go to um, Start Capture, which is this button. And you should have Start Capture will get you to a screen that looks just like this. Now, you already have your headphones in, so you should see a little line oscillating around, which means this is listening. That's right. I see everybody's got that screen. OK. So now notice something. Remember I told you you can do different things with it. You can just do the microphone. You can choose a screen, or you can do a webcam. OK. Right now, your thing should be set up so you don't have the webcam selected. By the way, is this the newest version? This is, as far as I know. Prompt, lately, I've been getting prompts that there's a new version of Echo. Do I want to install it now? And I always say no, because I'm just, I mean, I'm, I'm working with uh, constraints. And, OK. Uh, I, think, I think at least these computers have been updated. I'm not sure okay. when. But it's probably not a bad I idea to update. Window, OK. I, I would encourage you to go with it, because they have improved a number of aspects of how it works. OK, so now what we can do just for, this is kind of skimming through. We do more things if we were going to stay with this process. But you can click Start Capture, which is this red button when you're ready. You can get your headphones on, whatever. Now, you're going to have about a five second window where you may feel stressed. Once you click Start Capture, it's going to start a countdown. During that countdown, what you want to do is you want to get to your black, your, if you're going to do this style of recording, Go to your PowerPoint and reactivate its window, and then say, go to start of um, do slideshow, and then from start of slideshow. And that's a lot to do. And you may feel like, I can't get through it OK. And that's OK, because you can also trim the edges, the front and the back, off a personal capture recording. So if you, if you have a few seconds of fumbling at the start, it's not a problem. You can get rid of it really easily. OK. so. Everybody's got, so for now, we've got to minimize PowerPoint. We can't cheat. Or, well, you can, as long as you can get to your window. Some of you have it tiled medium, so you can switch back and forth. But when you actually do your personal capture, you don't want it tiled in a medium size. Um, because personal capture is going to record the entire screen. 
So if you have a thing there, it's going to record all your desktop around the outside as a frame. OK? So everybody's caught up? So let's click Start Recording. And then you're going to go into your whirlwind operation of trying to get PowerPoint to launch from the start of your presentation. There you go. You can click Slideshow. And then from Start. Where's the start? OK, so you go to Slideshow, click oh, that. Okay. Yep, click that. And then you can go from beginning. Okay. Thank you. That's right. There you go. So Slideshow and from beginning. And it'll give you your full choices. Should be recording. The cool thing about recording PowerPoints on two campuses, is you don't have to wait for each slide to finish and then pause. That's right. Now, another thing, if you want, if someone wants to do this, you can also do um, annotations in this. For example, I'm sorry, what's your name? Karen. Karen. If Karen here pops back to uh, that, right, you can, if you do a right click on it, you can go down to pointer yeah. options or something like that. Oh, no, this isn't, it's not in slideshow. So if you go back to slideshow, and then from the start, it'll let you, you might want to do show up on the big screen. Yeah, you're right. So I'm going to do this real quick. I'll show you something where I do capture, start capture. I'm going to go to my PowerPoint, slideshow, from beginning. It just started recording. But I'm going to be naughty, and I'm going to write on this. OK, so I'm going to show you how to annotate. Right clicked. OK, I'm going to go to pointer options. And this time, I'm going to go to pen. I could also do a highlighter. So if I'm going to write on this, I can say, this is a practice exercise. This is not the real thing. OK, or you can draw happy faces, whatever. I'm terrible with this. Obviously, if you were going to make this really work as annotation, you'd have to have a whole lot better control of your cursor than this mouse is giving me. Um, that's another topic, and Lisa's an expert on that. We'll get to the next. So you can also. I can also go to a highlighter option and highlight. Simpler slides are better. So this is really useful if you're going to draw attention to something. You're going to say, better, whatever. I'm obviously not doing a good job of this presentation. Um, those of you who've got the blank space or the, the one that's more math oriented, you could do things, you know, calling attention to parts of a graph with circling. You could do worked problems if you've got enough cursor control. We can talk about that. And then when you're done, you can say Alt F2. Or if you prefer, and you can see it, you're going to see a little tiny um, curse, a little tiny symbol at the bottom of your screen. It's probably red if you're still recording, and that's your personal capture button. And if you click that, it'll stop your recording. Are we all? Let's see. Oh, well, this is interesting. I think I have another. OK. OK, so a bunch of you have recordings. I'm going to X out of here. Oops. I'm going to discard. Um, let me go back to personal capture. Is it on here? How did you get to a personal capture? Just here? Oh, yep. Yeah. OK, so I'm going to go to my recordings, because this is the last thing I did. So now if you're in this, you should see a window that looks like this. Just to show you real quick, we don't have time to do much, but this button here, when you play it, if you click here, see this? This is your play button. And it'll move this. This shows where you are in the recording at any given second. Now, let's say I wanted to cut off. Let's say I don't want to show me going through this part of messing with my um, pointer options. I can grab this little yellow guy. And voila, this is the new start of the recording. If I go over to this side, I can pull this in. So now I've pulled in this, and I've pulled in that, and I can trim the recording. And then 
Do I then go, what, apply edits? At that yes, point, if you go apply edits, it's going to do this funny little thing, save. Now if I go back in, the, the recording is now trimmed. That's really handy because, because personal capture does the whole screen. A different length at the end there, shouldn't I? On the mm -hmm. Yes, you should. Okay, so now you can go to a my recordings thing. We don't have a bunch here, but, and then you can go to publish recording. And then you have to just log in. I'm just going to log in with an FCLD account. If you get an account through the MCS website, it's in the documentation. Hmm. OK. Now look at this. Now that I've logged in as a PCAP user with that, I can choose which course. These are all the courses associated with our FCLD account. So I can choose a course, and if I say next, and I keep going with this process, the way this will show up is all the personal capture I've just done and chosen the course for will show up in the recordings area of the course. So now if I go into, um, if, I clicked, if I click through all the steps, I think I've, I've overrun my time, so I'm not going to do it. No, you can. You can? Longer. Okay. Publish and then go into Blackboard and find it. Okay. Let's see. Let's do a publish recording. I'll do this again. FCLD. When you get your account, you do have to give Matt um, Weber, who's the lecture capture person, I get it, the CRNs or the course numbers of the courses you want to link between Echo, PCQ, and Blackboard. I'm going to do this one, K Walsh Sandbox, because I can remember it. Next. Oh, that's true. I won't. I'm not sure which one I can actually choose that will work, but that's OK. Now, this is another set of choices. Note it's asking me, is this an audio only? Uh, is it a display only where you are showing lots of pictures that are still and you need really good quality? Or um, optimized for detailed PowerPoint, which I would go with on this one. Each recording is called an echo. So if it says create new echo, it means this is a new recording. But also notice, you can replace an existing one. So if you have an existing one from another course with the same title, let's say you have an introduction to SOCH 101, you could come in, record a new intro to SOCH 101, record it over the top. Anyway, um, putting in a title. Publish. That's uploading it to the server. And now, let's see. I will go to, where's my, I'm confused. Oh, there's Firefox. Now, do you know which course you put it in? I don't. I just put it into one of the FCLD sandboxes. But this should work anyway, because our other, um, you might find another one. yeah, I'll find another one where it shows up. Uh, let's hope that there's something in here. So what should be is it should be in here. Look, um, I'm not sure why this isn't working, but that's what it looks like. You go to your recordings tab in the course you've chosen, and it's there. So then you can choose to move it within the course or keep it there, whatever your choice. Um, the great thing about this is if you've recorded it in PCAP, like I said, you have a choice of doing the talking head, where you talk at it, and it captures video as well as audio. You have a choice of doing a capture with a presentation. Or you can do both, where you have your webcam going, and it's recording you while you're doing your screen presentation. That's a little challenging to pull off well. But any questions on this? OK, we're good.